Hey guys, here's my dynamic programming tutorial with the 01 knapsack problem as our example. Let me explain what the knapsack problem is first. We have a certain number of items. Let's say we have n items or five in this case, five items. And each item has an associated weight and value with it. So the first item weighs one kilogram and is $5. And the second item weighs two kilograms and it's worth $3. And the problem is we're trying to decide which items to put in our knapsack, which can only carry a certain amount of weight. Let's say 10 kilograms. We can only carry 10 kilograms. And we are trying to maximize the total, the total amount of value that we carry with those items. So for each item, we're gonna decide do we put it in the knapsack or outside the knapsack? So let's just say yes or no. Or we could write it as one if it's in knapsack or no if it's not in the knapsack. And at first glance, it looks very hard because if we make this decision for every item, the total number of solutions, the total number of potential solutions is gonna be two to the power of n or two to the power of five in this case. But actually, we can do much better than that with dynamic programming. And you'll see how you can do it in a second. Here's a common procedure in dynamic programming. We first come up with a recursive solution, and then we memorize or store some of the intermediate results to make it run faster. The third optional step is coming up with a bottom-up approach, but I'm not gonna do that just for simplicity's sake for this particular case. So here's our naive recursive solution. The idea is we're gonna start with the last item and we're gonna move down the list. And we ask ourselves for where the pointer is, are we gonna put this item in the knapsack or not? So for the first element, of course that's yes or no. And we'll also keep track of how many items we have left to consider. Or you can see as the position of the pointer as well. So it starts with five, and we'll keep track of the amount of capacity we have left. That starts with 10 in our example, 10 kilograms, and the value we have so far. That starts with zero. And if you said no for the first item or the last item, this item, then n becomes four. We're essentially moving this pointer to the left. So that becomes four and C, capacity doesn't change, so that's 10, and the value doesn't change, so that's still zero. And if we said yes, N becomes four, we, uh, we have four items left to consider, the capacity becomes 10 minus five equals five, we can still carry uh, five kilograms, and the value becomes zero plus two equals two. And for each decision, we ask ourselves uh, for the fourth item, are we going to put this in the knapsack or not? So that's yes or no again. So we keep repeating this process until we get to the last item, this one. So that's the idea behind our recursive solution, but it works slightly differently in the code. So let's see how that works. So here's how our recursive solution works in our code. We define this function ks, knapsack, that takes two variables. The first variable is the position of the pointer that we're looking at, or the number of items we have left to consider. And the second variable is the amount of capacity we have left. So the first call for this example is going to be ks of five, because we have five items left to consider and 10 because we have 10 kilograms in our capacity. And here's our base case. If n equals zero, that means we have no items left to consider. And if c equals zero, we don't have any capacity. So we just return zero. And from this function, we're returning the optimal value that we can achieve with this pair of variables instead of the list of items itself. So if you wanna do that, you'll need to change the code a little bit. Now, if the current item's weight is larger than our current capacity, then we can't put it there. So we just move the pointer to the left and we call this function again. 
And if that's not the case, we'll try both putting the item in the knapsack and not putting it there. So if we don't put the item in the knapsack, then we just call the same function with the same variables again. With the pointer moved to the left, and if we put it there, we'll count in the current item's value, and we'll add it to this recursive call where the pointer is moved to the left and the capacity left is reduced by the current item's weight. And we'll just take the maximum one of those to get the optimal value. By the way, our values are stored in this array that starts with a dummy variable and our actual values. So that's 53532. And the reason is because when we have, say, the second element, we can just call v of 2 and we get the right element, the right value. And it's the same thing with the weights. So it also starts with a dummy variable and then actual weights. So this is how our solution works, but it's very, very slow. And let's see why that is. If you think about the worst case scenario, we try for the last element, we'll try yes or no. And then for the second last element, we'll try putting that item in there and not putting it there. And so on. So we are basically trying every possible case. So the time complexity for this algorithm will be exponential, which is very bad. Dynamic programming says we can do better than that by memorizing or storing some intermediate results or by noticing that there are some duplicates in our computation. So here's how we can do it. We have here a function that's almost exactly the same as what we had earlier, except for these three lines. And the first thing to notice here with the previous function we had is that there are only n times c possible variable pairs that we could have. So in the example we had earlier, this would be just 10 times 5 times 10, which is 50 possible variable pairs. And what we're doing here is we're storing the results of this function in a two-dimensional array with the height n and width c. And we initialize it to undefine the outside function. And then when we call this function, if the result is already stored for that particular uh, variable pair, then we just return that instead of going through the whole thing. And if that's not the case, we'll go through the whole thing. And before we return the result, we'll store it in the array so we can reuse it later. So what's the runtime for this function? The first thing to notice to find that is that we reach this line only at most n times c times. So we go through this whole thing at most n times c times, and every time we go through this function, the maximum number of recursive calls we make is just twice, in this case, this one and this one. So the maximum number of times we call this function itself is about 2 times nc, or just an order of nc. And the time it takes to execute each call, or time per call, is just a constant time. So the total amount of time it takes to execute this whole thing is just an order of nc, which is much, much better than the exponential time complexity we had earlier. All right, hopefully you liked the video. You might also like my other video about dynamic programming with maximum subsequence as our example. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, you can subscribe right here. And see you soon.